Welcome to Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had such a good response from Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby Part 1 that we are now moving on to Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby Part 2. Um, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is our second one. Even though it was right after Podcast 36, this is still Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby Part 2, right? Is that how it works? Yes. Part one came after podcast 35. So <laughs> if you add one to 35 and then subtract one, but then add one more, you get Eddie and Webby dinking around with Eddie and Webby part two. I think I did the math right. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> um, I'm just checking to make sure the stream is still up here. Are you able to check on your side? Um, let's see. looks like it's still up i think uh, i don't know on youtube i see nothing but a black screen but maybe it could be delayed it could be the part before we fade it up so um oh here we go i see the uh i see the fancy titling work that says dinking yes. around with eddie and webby so yeah the stream is still going on this is the kind of amazing content you can expect from dinking around with eddie and webby this is absolutely not planned at all so we're yep. just doing whatever whenever and yeah but uh for anybody that's not aware of what we do here, we like to just uh, talk about whatever. And one lucky viewer is going to join us live if they show interest. So if anybody out there that's watching us wants to join us, send us a message and we will try to get you connected. Oh, yeah. Um, I love this show. This is fun. It's super chill. It's laid back. Yeah. It's It's a good time. Uh, and so much so that I'm going to pour myself a second beverage here. Oh, nice. Another Cigar now, City Lager. Very nice. Now, if I was drinking a weaker beverage, I would definitely be pouring myself a second one, but I am drinking a KBS, and I have been good. I have been sipping it nice and slow. The old me probably would have guzzled this like crazy because it's so delicious. I'm drinking <laughs> KBS in case I didn't say that already. I might have already said that. But, uh, yeah, this is a very strong beer. Let me see what this even says. Um, this is 12.2%, which is, that's that's pretty strong. Yeah, I was going to say, that's actually, beer. that's actually probably double what this is. Um, actually, no, that's almost triple. This is 4.5%. So your <laughs> one is more alcohol than both of mine combined. So I should be good. So I'm going to be yes. good. I'm going to try and just sip this nice and slowly. But I'm seriously, this is so delicious. I could easily guzzle it right here and now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to sip it slowly. And Jack just heard me talking about beer. And here he is, everybody. Jack hey. the Cat is here. Hello, hey, Jack. Hey, Jack, 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 You know, I, I do miss chugging, though. That was always a fun little challenge and kind of, you know, having a little contest against each other. So I've always, uh, I've always enjoyed it. And I do miss that. I miss the fact that we don't chug anymore. Yeah, we might have to work something out. I'm not going to chug this KBS, that's for sure. So maybe, I don't know, one of these days we'll work we'll work a chug into uh, one of these episodes. Well, um, I do want to give a shout out to Alex. My buddy Alex just joined us. So hey, he Alex. finally made it to the show. Thanks for joining us. Better late than never. And Alex, if you want to join us live, let us know, and we can try and get you connected. Anybody, anybody who's watching live, if you want to connect with us, video chat with us, and yep. be on the air with us we can make that happen you just got to let us know yeah one of the things we're trying to do is wrap up before 9 p.m tonight because at 9 p.m it's like it's like pickleball podcast palooza tonight because yes scott scott parento has his call-in radio show and he's having a guest on there tonight that man i mean just amazing she's she's awesome right she is and uh, I believe her name is Simone Jardim, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're right. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Um, she, she is an awesome, awesome person, a great yep. pickleball player, one of the absolute best in the entire world, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he's got that on tonight. So we do not want to uh, interfere with that at all. In yep. fact, if, if for some reason we go past nine, just please stop watching the show. Right. Immediately. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> Immediately go right to his show, because um, that'll be that'll be much better than this this crap of a show yeah. that we do, right? 
this hack job. That's right. I, so I um I got to meet Simone a few weeks ago, man, and I got to tell you, like when I was about to meet her, I was I was a little bit nervous. I'm like, oh, you know, she's the number one, uh, the highest rated pickleball player in the world, number one women's player, and and I met her, and she was like the nicest person in the world. She was so easy to talk to. She was super humble and inviting. She made you feel right at home. We talked about you know, living in Michigan. She knew about the company that I work for. Like it was, it was awesome. She's just a really cool person. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I, I actually hate you quite a bit because of the fact that you got to meet her and have her on the show in person. But I mean, I'll, I'll forgive you one of these days. I haven't forgiven you yet. Um, but yeah, that was, well, uh, that I'm was sure awesome get... that you had her on. Yeah. I'm sure you'll get to meet her at the beer city open. Yeah, I cannot wait because that's that's going to be my first like real taste of full blown professional players. I mean, I've I've met some some great professional players. I don't want to uh, downgrade that at all. Uh, Andrea Coop, she's an mm -hmm. awesome player. Um, Brandon Schmeling, I've met some great players, um, but I feel like uh, the Beer City Open it's going to be almost overwhelming. The uh, the pickleball senses are going to be going into overdrive because. There's going to be Kyle Yates, Ben Johns, Simone. I mean, just you uh, pretty much name anybody you can think of that is at the top of the list of pickleball players. They're most likely going to be there. Cannot wait. The Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Holy jeez. Can't wait. Yep. It's going to be a real, real good time. Um, so many, yeah, so many people there. We're going to be there. That's all that matters. We're going to be there. You can hang out with us because I know that's at the top of your yes. list, right? It, that's going to be awesome. Um, I've actually got a pretty big announcement I want to make right now. Is, is now a good time for a, a good big announcement, you think? Ooh, yeah, let's do it, man. So anybody that listened last week to the podcast knows that I challenged Eddie to a singles match for Eddie versus Webby Part 3. Well, mm -hmm. turns out Eddie is actually going to be in Michigan near where I am next week, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Yep, I am, uh, I'm ready to bring the belt with me, and I'm ready to take it right back home with me. This belt right here, the one that's sitting on that mantle. Oh, man, so. I can just, uh, I can just taste that belt right now. It's, uh, I came so close to getting that belt in Grand Rapids. It really should have been mine, folks. Um, for anybody that wasn't there or didn't see the videos that we posted, man, we came so close to winning. Uh, Andrea and I, we played to, we played great together in Eddie versus Webby 2.5. We really should have won. I made a couple bonehead mistakes that probably cost us the game. Um, but I think I can uh, I think I can remedy that next week. We're going to do our first ever singles match. We're going to do a full court skinny singles where we alternate sides mm -hmm. with each point. And uh, we're still trying to figure out the location. It's going to be at one of two places near where I live. Um, do you think we should announce either of those places here, or do you think we need to still figure things out before we announce anything? Oh, well, I mean, I think I think we can announce it. It's it'll definitely be at one of those two places uh, before we do that though so one of the things that we decided on was whoever loses the previous eddie versus webby match gets to pick kind of what the format is of the upcoming match and and webby wanted to go with skinny singles i've only played skinny singles across from each other on half court though that's it i've never played what we're going to be doing where you're actually playing on um, opposite sides, but I feel like that one is going to be more similar to how doubles is played rather than absolutely like right across from each other. So yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh it's super fun. I love playing that way. I hate playing full court skinny singles. Um, I confirmed that a couple of weeks ago. What, what is I full court skinny buddy. singles? Uh, what, <laughs> what is full court skinny singles? Um, well, I was talking about I hate full court singles. Did I say oh, full oh. court skinny? Yeah, and that's that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, yes, finally, Webby said something wrong in the podcast. I will always remember this moment because I say the wrong shit stuff all the time. Oh, that's ooh. a curse. 
<laughs> and finally, actually, I don't know. I wish we had instant replay because I think I said the right thing. I thought I didn't. said I hate skinny singles. I would or, bet you. Skinny, you said you said no, I ah. hate <laughs> I hate skinny full court singles, and that's what I'm like. What the hell is skinny four court for full court singles? I think you've had too much to drink. I think nope. you're mishearing things. Anyways, so what I was trying to say, whatever I said, I hate full court singles. It's just I my cardio isn't good enough for it, but I love full court skinny singles. What I mean by full court is you play across from each other during the even matches or whatever, or their even points, and then if you score a point and you're serving, then you go over to the left, and now you are serving diagonally. So what so happens on, like so what? Forth. Like when the serve come back comes back to me and I'm at three, do I then serve from the odd position or do I go back to the starting position when I serve? You you would serve from the odd position. You serve from whatever your score position is. So if that so makes sense. Just like just like regular singles then. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. It is. Gotcha. But the I other person sure. kind of like stays the other person stays where they're at. So at some points it's gonna be across from each other. And at some points, it'll be diagonal. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what? At what some the hell points, are you talking about? Why would you ever be across from me? Like, whoever is receiving the serve always stays on that side, on the side that they're at. What game is this, man? I have never heard of this game ever <laughs> in my entire life. I've either played where you're only on one side of the court the whole entire mat, the entire game, and you play across from each other. So it's basically like playing full court singles, except for it's just on half. And there's a, there's a piece of tape that runs down the center line through the kitchen. And you, you stay on that one side for the entire match. That's it. And then I've seen well, it where you, you haven't. Play. And, and, yeah, you and that's have, how tournaments lived, do it, though. <laughs> yeah, you haven't lived if you haven't played the way that I talked about. So now you're talking about the fact that the person on the receiving end stays there. And so for one point, you're directly across from them. And then for the next point, you're diagonal from them? Yes, exactly. That's, That's that exactly is, right. That is the most bizarre way of playing pickleball I've ever heard of in my entire life. It is super fun, and a lot of people do it. <laughs> I have no, I've never seen anybody in my entire life do it. Oh, man. I hope people are watching right now. I feel like uh, somebody tell Eddie how crazy he is for never hearing of this way of playing. I've heard of two two skinny signals, either across from each other or diagonal. That's it. They don't mix. You don't you don't intermix them during the match. No, that's what that's what you call full court skinny singles, man. No, full court skinny singles is where you play in the diagonal. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're going to look this up. It's it's going to go down <laughs> I, because I got to I mean, you got I got to know what the rules are, right? So while you look it up, um, I am going to uh, take a sip of my beer. All right. But anyway, that's where Eddie versus Webby 3 is going to be going down. Um, so maybe we should do, uh, how about we do this? How about we do a poll on the Eddie and Webby channel, and we'll, uh, we'll see if people think we should do um, the method I talked about, or just diagonal, or just across. Just, just out of curiosity to see what the masses say. Well... Alexandru said correct, and I'm assuming that Alexandru meant towards what I was saying. I'm assuming that he meant towards what I was saying. So, so Alex, when you get a chance, uh, just to reply with Eddie or Webby when, and let us know who you said was correct. <laughs> yeah, somebody out there knows the truth. Oh, he says you play, you play diagonally all the time. Alex doesn't know what he's talking about. See, I'm <laughs> telling you, that's weird. I, I, have you really played that way where you alternate? Yeah, I, I heard, I read about it and I played like it. I don't remember where I read about it, but I played like it. Anybody out there, has anybody ever heard of what I'm talking about? Where like when you're, you do a skinny singles game, but like it depends on where your serving position is, whether you're serving directly across from each other or going diagonally from each other. Am I crazy? Did I make this up? Maybe I made it up. I don't know, but I could have swore this is a real thing. Hmm. Well, so far we have one one person that thinks that that's crazy. I'm happy to play that way. I'm just glad we we talked about it so I knew what I was getting into. So, <laughs> Yes. But anyway, why don't we talk about when and where Eddie versus Webby 3 is going down. Yes, so we do know the when... And that is going to be next Wednesday, which is March 27th. Yes. 
and it's going to be happening right around either 6 30 p.m or 7 p.m somewhere around that uh somewhere around that time frame uh, between 6 30 and 7 p.m and it's either going to happen at one of two places if the weather is really nice um, we might try to play outdoors at freedom park in canton michigan Ooh. now if the weather is iffy then we're gonna do it at my home court a place that i've been playing pretty much every wednesday for the last few months at hype recreation center in the city of wayne michigan so it's going to be at one of those two locations depending on what the weather is looking like yeah the weather time frame a lot of factors but it's gonna be yes. fun um hey nicole miller just posted on facebook hi guys hey nicole Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Uh, um, well, cool. What else is uh, is going on? Anything else going on at Hype lately? Um, yeah, so actually last week I got numerous phone calls, and uh, it was from people that I didn't know that were inquiring about playing pickleball at Hype Rec Center in the city of Wayne, and I thought that was pretty cool. That was like, it made, it made my... USAPA ambassadorship seem official because I've never actually gotten a phone call from anybody and my phone call or my phone number is listed out there and I uh, had never gotten a call before but within one week I got three separate calls from people wow. that I didn't know just inquiring about pickleball at hype I talked to them they seemed excited about it and sounded like they were gonna try to start coming out there and yeah I thought that was awesome I liked it I liked hmm. it a lot that's cool. And have they have any people that have called you? Have they had a chance to play yet? Um, nope. That was just this this week. I was not able to make it to hype mm. this week because of my work schedule. I'm only able to make it every other Wednesday due to my rotating late shift schedule at work. So maybe maybe they made it this week. I just don't know because I wasn't there. Um, but yeah, and uh, I'm looking at YouTube right now. And there's a comment from Leslie White, and she says, Sorry, Adam, I have only ever played diagonal or straight, never both in one game. I prefer full court myself. So, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I just made a game up. Who knows? <laughs> Who, who's Adam? I'm not sure, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> she must be mistaken. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, maybe, maybe you invented a new game. We could call it Webby Style. Yeah, I, I swear other people have talked about this. I, somebody from the Pickleball Forum could, could back me up, I'm so, sure. So but I'm pretty sure that's where I read about it. I've played Cutthroat that way, where you have, you have one person on one side and two on the other, and then they always stay in whatever position they were in where they last served if they're the, the single person on that side. But that I've only played that way. I've never played in singles that way. Yeah, I've done both. I've done Cutthroat. And I've done singles that way. So you just, mm. you, you haven't lived because you haven't played that way. <laughs> well, since, I mean, it's your choice. So if you want to, if you want to do it Webby style, we can totally do that. Well, I don't, I don't want you crying. I don't want you making an excu any excuses. So, um, we'll no, go excuses. ahead and do the diagonal way. We'll do the diagonal way. Okay. And we'll do at least the diagonal way. If we can, if we can get anybody else to back up my way as being a legit way to play skinny singles. Maybe we'll do the other way, but at the moment, we're going to do the diagonal. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think that's better. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I'm excited for it. It'll be, it'll be fun. What's the weather going to be like next week? Are you? Is it going to be typical crap <laughs> Michigan March weather, or is it going to be it's decent? It's been nice lately. It's been, in the, uh, it's been in the upper 40s, man. It's been real nice. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, upper 40s. Can't wait. <laughs> For us Michiganders, that's incredible. I've been no. going outside with short sleeves and shorts on. I do remember this time of year, though, where you get like your first 60 degree day and everybody's out, windows rolled down, the snow is melting and leaving all that like residue dirt and crap behind. The, 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 you know, the grass is all waterlogged with the melting snow. Like it's a, I do remember that time of year. It smells nice. So I'm excited for that, but. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the extended forecast, and for next Wednesday, the 27th, it looks partly cloudy with a high of 49 degrees. So for me, <laughs> that's awesome outdoor weather. I mean, for you, that's probably torture. So 
Whatever, I'll do it. I, I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, have you ever played with a Durafast in fifty degree weather? Um, I played with it down there in uh down in there in Florida, and it was cracking like crazy in like fifty degree weather or like upper fifties. So yeah, I'm sure it would <laughs> get destroyed instantly here in Michigan. Yeah, I played with it a couple times down here when it's been in the fifties, and it's <laughs> it's awful. We'll have to we'll have to play with the Franklin for that. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe maybe we should stick with hype. Maybe just so we're guaranteed to know the conditions that we're gonna play in. I don't know. For me, I mean, I would I would easily play in forty nine degree weather outdoors, but I'm fine I know with that it. Could be tough. It, honestly, it doesn't. It, don't worry about me. Like I I'll be I'll play wherever. I don't care. Well, what what'll make you cry less? Losing indoors or losing in the colder outdoors? <laughs> What will make me cry less is um, losing. I, I don't know. I, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether I win or lose. All I'm focusing on, based on what Barrett Kinchelow just told us, is what I can control and setting systems. And my systems are, I'm going to hit my drops. I'm going to be consistent with my shots. I'm going to make sure that, you know, my my um, confidence at the line is up. And if I do that, then I'm going to be happy. The score doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah. Those are very great points. That was, I, I need to take Barrett's suggestions. I need to take his advice. Um, so I think going off of that, my goal is going to be to crush you and to bring the belt home. That's my goal. <laughs> you mean this belt right, right here? I, I don't know what else I would put in its place. Like it would, my, my shelf would look awkward if I didn't have that there. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see <laughs> just how nice it looks right there. Right? Look at that. All right. Like so it. that is going to be my goal is to make your shelf look really stupid because it's going to be <laughs> have a big, giant, empty space. Because that belt is coming to Michigan, and it's staying in Michigan. Well, um, actually, Nicole Miller just asked, you coming back to the mitten, Eddie? Uh, I am next week. I'll be in Detroit for work. And then yeah, like, I feel like I have to get my exercise in while I'm there. I can't go five days without getting, you know, at least some sort of exercise. So usually I'll, I'll play pickleball one night with Webby. And that's when, uh, that's when the Eddie versus Webby three is going to happen. Oh yeah. And for the first time ever, it's going to be a singles match. Yep. And, uh, I think it's going to be awesome. And, I really feel like this is going to be the true test to see who the better man is on the pickleball court. I mean, we've done every match doubles so far. And, uh, I mean, I've had great... Every, every game that I've played has been... I've had great partners, so I definitely can't blame my partner for any of the losses because I've had great partners. Um, but I just... It's going to be strictly Eddie versus Webby. Well, and We're this is a tough thing, uh, though, you know? It's... It's a tough situation because you and I both prefer to, prefer to play doubles. And by playing doubles, we add an element of someone else that ultimately it's not, it's not a carbon copy of yourself, right? So there's always going to be another element added of uncertainty to who the better player is out there. So I think this is the most fair way to do it. Um, the only other way I could think of is that if you could find like a complete unbiased pair and you, you swap between games I, I don't know how else you could do it in doubles yeah and, and to be clear i i totally i love doubles i totally prefer doubles um but we've had i've had numerous suggestions in person to play singles we've had at least a couple twitter comments saying that we need to play singles um so i just i felt like eddie versus webby three which is technically our fourth time ever playing <laughs> against each other <laughs> is uh is the great time to uh, to try out doing singles against each other yep. and see how it goes. That'll be fun. Uh, have you been um, have you been watching the pickleball forum lately? Like how how often do you check the pickleball forum throughout the day? Uh, I check it a lot. I I'm not, not gonna lie, I do check it quite a bit. Um, and uh, sometimes I just check it just to see like what the trolls are doing because there's so many so many trolls on the pickleball forum people that just <laughs> like to get under the skin of other yeah. people some days it amuses me some days it annoys me um but yeah i check it quite a bit some days not as much as others uh, but for the past week pretty consistently um there's been a lot <laughs> of posts 
about a specific topic. <laughs> in fact, there's been so many posts about it. People were saying that anybody else that starts a new post about it is going to be banned from the pickleball <laughs> forum. <laughs> and, uh, and that topic is thoughts on people that pick on an obviously new or less skilled player during rec play. So let's say you and somebody that's new are playing together against two experienced players and those two experienced players do nothing but target the new player. What are your thoughts on that? Well, all right. So per, all I can tell you is what I personally like to do. And when I'm playing rec play, I have a few goals. One of them is to have fun. Number two is to meet people in the social element. And number three is to also improve my game. So personally, I hate always playing to the weaker player because I feel like that doesn't give me the opportunity to improve. It probably, so, so, that, so it hurts goal number three. The social aspect, it hurts that because I'm probably going to leave the court with an enemy or somebody who is not going to want to be friends with me uh, if, if I continue to play to them. And then uh, goal number one is, you know, to, to go out there and, uh, and, and play. And to me, it's like I'm making a bad experience for the other person if I continue to do that. So it doesn't meet any of my goals for rec play at all to play to the weaker player. And I would much rather lose a game that I'm, you know, getting good experience with and I'm enjoying and I'm having a good time out there rather than winning a game by just dominating a weaker player. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, it's just, uh, like, if I'm playing against the team where one of them is obviously a new player, for the majority of the time, I'm going to try hitting to the better player just because I want to challenge myself. But at the same time, I also want to make sure that the new player gets some experience. So I'll, I'll hit a few to them, but I'm not going to be slamming the ball at them or trying to destroy them or anything. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know. To me, it's just it's common courtesy. Um uh, just like you said, it's like for the for the social experience, which I think rec play for pickleball, um, that's what it's all about. Uh, so there are some people on the pickleball forum that were saying, "Well, if you if you treat rec play different than tournament play, then you're not a not a true competitive player." Blah blah blah. And it's like, come on, man. That's you know what? That's BS because that would mean that if you're a professional player then you should never give lessons because if you're giving lessons, you're not playing how you would be playing in a tournament. And so that's, that's bullshit. I'm going to say it. that's bullshit. Like oh. you can't, you can't, you can't say that. Like I, I, there's a time and a place to prep for a tournament. And I think that if you're using rec play, you need to be very clear with the people you're playing with that you have a tournament coming up and you're looking to do it or even better do private play, reach out to people and prepare ahead of time to say, Hey, I really want to get into tournament zone and do that. If you're using rec play constantly as tournament play, then you're completely defeating the purpose and there's no room for you to any time on my court. There's just no room for you. Yeah, I agree with you there. Absolutely. And, uh, to go along with what you said, um, I'm playing in a tournament this coming Sunday with, with Eddie, the other Eddie that we, that we know. And uh, and we were clear before every game we would we would go to the other team and say hey do you care for the two of us play together we're we want to get some practice in before a tournament that we got this weekend so we made it clear that we're like kind of doing training um, normally when you do rec play at, at least at the places I go if you play together and you win a game you then split up two like you stay yeah. on as the winners two new people come on and you split up um, but we would clearly say hey do you care if we stay together so we can get some more practice for our upcoming tournament. Um, and then if anybody ever, nobody had a problem with it, um, but if anybody did have a problem with it, we would gladly split up and, and do whatever makes the other people comfortable. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, like you said, you, it, make sure it's clear that you're going to try and uh, like play a little harder than normal during rec play if you're practicing for a tournament. Uh, but the place we played at has a lot of great players, so we didn't. There really weren't any weak players to to try to target. Everybody was really good there. But I just I can I cannot stand the people that uh, like always focus on an obviously weak and beginner yeah. player just for the sake of winning. Yep. When it's not in tournament action, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's just it's 
complete BS yeah. for the people that say that the people that don't play to win at all costs, even during rec play, um, like it's yeah, screw those people. Well, you know, the one thing that I will say is if I'm playing up against somebody who's a beginner or I'm playing up against maybe somebody who's older and being in Naples, that happens quite a bit. I typically like if if they give me a cheeseburger, right? I'm not going to slam yeah. it at them. But what I might do is I might give them a shot towards their feet that's light, hard for them to return because that's a good learning opportunity for them, right? For them to know that, hey, if you lob that ball up and you're putting it at my sweet spot, it's very unlikely that that's going to be a returnable shot for you. And so I feel right. like if you're if if you're intentionally never going to help them learn the lessons, then you're not doing them a favor either. So mm -hmm. by by never playing to the weaker person, I don't think that's right either. So you, right. I just think you have to find the balance. You got to read out the situation. You have to understand what the other team is going through. You have to you know see how they are and and go from there. I'm never going to slam a ball at an 80 year old woman. It's never going to happen. But I have no right. problem crushing any of my neighbor guys that I play with right in the chest if their paddles down at their at their knees at the line. I have no problem doing that. So I think you just got to read the situation and 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 know what to expect. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, if I'm if I'm playing with a close friend of mine um, that I like to get competitive with, no doubt I'm going to smash that ball directly at their chest any chance I get. <laughs> but if it's somebody that I don't know. Or somebody that's new to the game, I'm absolutely gonna take it, take it easy on them. Um, but at the same time, like you said, at least hit some hit some balls to them and let them know, like, or let, it, let them get some experience and also teach them, like, don't serve up cheeseburgers because uh, that's bad. That's a that's a real bad. Uh, that's bad. It's a bad bad thing to do. You you better not do that. Um, but yeah, good good topic. I don't know if you saw or not, but. Uh, my former partner who actually won uh, the Eddie and Webby shirt for for picking me as the winner of the Eddie, Eddie versus Webby 2.5, uh, Rick Lorraine, the last tournament he was in last weekend in Vero Beach, him and his partner had hats that said, don't hit to Dave. Did you see that post at all in the pickleball forum? <laughs> I, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did see that post. <laughs> I, I, I wish I knew the backstory behind uh, behind why they made those hats or whatnot, but I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, speaking of people yeah. that won the shirts, I don't know if anybody out there listening or watching knows who Dee Dee Jackson is. She was the winner of the uh, the best wrestler, um, the best wrestler name thing. But we have not heard back from Dee Dee. So if anybody knows who Dee Dee Jackson is, let her know she won. I actually sent her a message on Facebook, um, but I uh, it looks like she has not read it. I know some people have settings to where they don't. Unless they're friends with you, they don't ever see a Facebook message. So I, she probably never got it. Or maybe she just doesn't get on Facebook very often. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But if anybody knows who Dee Dee Jackson is, tell her to send us an email or reach out to us on Facebook so we can get her her T-shirt. Yeah. Come on, Dee Dee. Let's do it. Maybe she just doesn't want the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's probably it. She was probably like, oh, I'm just going gonna, gonna to give an answer to these lame asses and uh, <laughs> nothing will ever come of it. And then she won. She's like, oh, my God, I don't want that shirt. Maybe if I just ignore them, they'll uh, leave me alone. Yep. They'll go away eventually. Um, <laughs> I, I did. I mean, her her wrestler name that she suggested, La Bla Bigelow, I mean, that was that was perfect. That was by far, I don't want to say by far my favorite, but it was a clear winner because we both we both picked it yeah. as our number one. Yeah, we uh, we both wrote down what our favorite was. We revealed it to each other at the same time, so... We yeah. we both clearly thought that was the winner, so there was no no debate whatsoever. I love when stuff like that comes together. Just like when we did our, our top ten list for 2018, mm -hmm. it was crazy how close our two lists were. Because Eddie came up with a list of ten his ten favorite moments from the year. I came up with my list of top ten moments of the year, and it was super oh. super close. It was awesome. I could not believe it. I thought for sure we would argue. I thought we would have just a lot of fights over it. I thought we would even like stop being friends over it. Yeah, I thought we were going to be Backstreet Boys, but it turns out <laughs> we were in sync. Oh, <laughs> hey -oh. Now that's the kind of jokes that you're only going to get here on Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby. Speaking of that. Oh, yeah. 
why is our audience so shy? I know there's viewers out there. I can see. I can see that there right. are thousands of you watching right now, and nobody wants to come on the show. And here we are. We have to sign off in 10 minutes, and nobody wanted to come on. What's that all about, guys? Yeah, come on. Shy? Nicole, if you're still out there, don't you want to join us for the show and just, just chat for like two minutes? So it's all, it's all we want is two minutes of, a, of an impromptu guest. Can't believe how shy everybody is. This is crazy. Thousands. Oh, wait a minute. Now we're at uh, millions of viewers, oh. and... It just bumped up there like crazy out of nowhere. <laughs> That's cool. I get it, guys. I understand not everybody wants to uh, come on and, and live stream. It does it does take a lot. Uh, but, hey, next time, be ready because we'll have you on. And I, I'm looking forward to just finding somebody totally random who's into pickleball, who we've never met, we know nothing about, and just bring them on the show and see what happens, right? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. Um, I have, I know I have my Christy and Leslie. Yeah, <laughs> Christy and Leslie have been watching. They're the they're the founders of Wolverine Pickleball. I think it'd be awesome if either of them wanted to join us for an impromptu chat. I mean, it's totally up to you. Yep. We've only like we're only going to be on for fourteen minutes tops because we don't we do not want to go past nine p.m. Eastern time. Nope. Can't go past that because that's when Steve Parento is going to have Simone Jardim on and. Um, yes, you, you got to watch that. You can't like, if we go past nine immediately log off yeah. and go to that. Yes. In fact, yeah. I think we're just going to pull the plug. We're, we're literally going to pull the plug because that's, that's how this whole show is controlled is by a plug that's plugged into the AC outlet. And once that gets pulled, the show just ends it's and done. that's, that's what's going to happen. Yep. Um, well, we do have a few more minutes, and I still have a few sips of beer. How are you doing on yours? Uh, I don't know if you can see this glass, but it is, uh, yeah, it's a sadly, sadly. Well, there's a couple of drops. Let me see if I can get the last few drops out. Mm. Got to savor oh, it. yeah. Yep. Um, let's talk a little bit about tournaments. I know you've, you've talked a little bit this week and last week about the tournament you have coming up on sunday right you want to remind everybody about that yeah so it's kind of like uh, just a couple of weeks ago i just learned about the the tournament i think it, i believe it's the very first tournament that's ever happening at the ymca in oregon ohio i didn't even know there was an oregon in ohio isn't hmm. oregon a state well isn't isn't but it's also <laughs> a city <laughs> i guess apparently it's a city also <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's in <laughs> it's in uh, Oregon, Ohio. Oh, but get this fun fact: the road that this YMCA in Oregon, Ohio, is located on is called Pickle Road. Can you believe that? What are the odds of that? Pickle Road, a pickleball so, tournament. I mean, that's I, on Pickle yeah. Road. Yes, yeah, I can't believe it. So it's like this: this YMCA was decent destined to have a pickleball tournament and a pickleball tournament they will have this Sunday and I will be there and I will be playing with Eddie not but not this Eddie. Eddie this Eddie over here he's actually sitting right next to me but he's too <laughs> camera shy to show up so I'll see you Eddie on Sunday <laughs> nice I'm looking forward to that I'm bummed because if I would have been able to move my flight up a couple hours I probably would have at least been able to go down and watch you guys play but oh well what are you gonna do that would have been epic to just like have an impromptu tournament out of nowhere and yeah. you'd be able to play with me but oh well i want to play still like if, play you, against. You, should, you should message me as soon as you land and if you're able to make it in time that would be great if just all of a sudden you kind of like shoved the other eddie out of the way took his place and uh mid, just, mid like, disguise rally. yourself yeah disguise yeah. yourself just wear the same clothing that he's wearing i'll take a all picture right. of him uh, at the beginning of the tournament, I'll send you what he's wearing. You put those clothes on, and then you arrive, and then just, uh, just yeah, kick him out know. and join me. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Nicole Miller uh, made a comment. I'm laughing at your lame jokes. They're not lame, Nicole. They're they're great jokes. You know it. Uh, <laughs> and and she says, and you guys fighting over how skinny singles are played. Ah, oh, we already covered this <laughs> and we've already realized that I was right and Webby was wrong, right? 
See, we just we just don't have the uh, the right people watching at the moment because I'm sure lots of people know about the method I was talking about. I swear I'm not making this up. I swear somebody mentioned it. I liked it. I tried it, and I liked it. Mm. Or they liked it, and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, I can't believe. Yeah, Nicole, Nicole, she has been each of our partners in the past, and she said our jokes are lame. Come on, that's not. What kind of a team player are you? <laughs> yeah, Nicole. I don't appreciate that. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> no, they are super lame, but... Um, yeah, I agree. So, I only have two... Uh, oh, my God. Christy just wrote, Webby is right. That is how you play skinny singles. Oh, I, wait I a think second. She, no, I think she meant Eddie is right, but she forgot who was who. Remember, I'm... <laughs> If you look down, Christy, I'm Eddie. Okay. That's Webby. So I'm pretty sure you meant that I was right. But go ahead and clarify if you wouldn't mind in chat, please. Yeah. Yeah. Send in, send in another reply. I'm I'm Webby, not Eddie. And remember, that's I'm the one that's Eddie. saying I'm the one that's saying you either play across from each other the whole time, or you play diagonal from each other the whole time. You don't you don't mix. It's one or the other. And let me let me clarify what I like. What what Eddie said is not incorrect. Those are ways to play uh, skinny singles, but isn't it true that a good way to play skinny singles is also an alternating way to where, when you're serving, um, you uh, at one point you're serving diagonally, but then if you score a point, you shift over, but the other person stays where they are, so that then you are straight across then if you score again you go back over back to the diagonal that way you just keep you keep alternating and it gets uh you get a lot of uh different styles of play in throughout the game hmm. well i guess we'll see doesn't that sound fun does, does that not sound fun i don't know i mean it's not a matter of fun or not it's a matter of like think about when, when you're serving right like to serve cross court consistently makes sense but then to alternate, like I have to serve diagonal and then I have to serve across and I have to, and then it's like your whole strategy each time changes a little bit. It just sounds super confusing to me. And, and I've just never seen it played like that before. I mean, all you got to do is remember like in full court singles, you, uh, you just, you serve from the, or you stand on the side of what your score is. You know, I mean, you have to right. do that anyway, but it's like if you're on the receiving team, so you're, I don't know, the whole thing just sounds super confusing. It just seems to me like you just be cross court because that's what you're either, you're either diagonal the whole time. Well, or I guess some people just don't have the, uh, the smarts and the intellectual brain power that other people do to keep track of something like that. Hey, I will totally admit <laughs> it, it takes every ounce of mental energy for me to remember the, the score. Let alone like the, the couple times that I've stacked, I'm always like, what am I supposed to? I don't know. No, it's not. Yeah. I'll give you that. It's not my thing, <laughs> but I guess we'll find out. But just to clarify for the match, we are playing diagonal the whole time, right? At the moment. Yeah. Let's just, no, let's no, just no, go no, ahead no. and stick with no. that. No, okay. no, let's just stick with that. We'll stick with that <laughs> diagonal. It, it'll make it easier. It will. I agree. It will make it easier. So okay. let's just go ahead and stick with it. Um, but I I do wish that uh that Christy would uh would clarify because I want to just I want to get that clarification that I'm right and you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all right. We'll just have to we'll have to. Yep. We'll have to be in suspense. Oh, speaking of Eddie's though, Eddie Dine, another great man that I've played pickleball. We've actually both played pickleball with a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, he just joined. How's it going, Eddie? Um, hey, Eddie. I feel like at some point I need to team up with Eddie. Um, with Eddie Dine because uh, I only seem to play pickleball tournaments with people named Eddie. <laughs> it's like a rule now. Yeah. That's cool. It's exciting. I'm excited about Eddie versus Webby 3. I'm exciting, excited about playing at either Hype or Canton next week. Um, but I'm also excited because US Open is coming up in what is that like five weeks? I think is when it kicks off, and I'm really excited about that. Man, that's another thing I'm super jealous and kind of hate you about the fact that you're going to be. I mean, well, I mean, it's like it's right in your backyard, pretty much the U.S. Open. I mean, yeah, man, that's awesome. Very jealous of that. 
Yep, it's basically right on down the road, which is nice, about five miles here from where I live. Super excited about that. It's going to be a crazy party. My wife and I both have the VIP Margaritaville passes, so we're going to be able to go and hang out right there in the championship court and have food and Margaritaville drinks every day. That also includes a custom U.S. Open Paddle Tech paddle that I'm super excited about. There's going to be a ton of people down here, uh, from especially from the Grand Rapids crew that we've met. Uh, I'm super excited about that as well. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I took the whole week off work, and I'm planning on being over at East Naples Community Park pretty much for as long as I can and do some other fun Naples activities with people. So it'll be a good Very nice. time. Yeah. Um, um, so Eddie, I think we're going to have a, a special guest and it's going to literally be for like one or two minutes tops. So check out your, uh, check out okay. your chat message so you can send me what I need and we'll see if we can get this could be our shortest ever live video chat, but I think we need to do it. Well, I want to make, uh, I want to make this happen. Yeah. If, if we go a little bit longer than nine, just remember at nine o'clock, go check out Steve Parento, go check out the pickleball talks with Steve Parento weekly call-in show Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time, which is 9 p.m. Standard time. The phone number, if you want to call in to Steve Parento's show, which tonight he's going to have Simone Jardim on, the number is 971-327-9530. It's guaranteed to be a good time. I'm looking forward to, to hearing it. But even if we go a little bit over, then we will figure it out. So Yes. Yeah. But like I feel like it's it's a mission of mine to get at least one person to join our show, dinking around with Eddie and Webby. Just even if it's for a minute or two, I feel like that would, uh, it's going to be mission accomplished just to have somebody join us. Yep. I mean, I mean, millions of viewers out there and they're all too shy to join us. I feel like <laughs> that's super hard to believe. I love it. Literally millions <laughs> of viewers. Oh, man. Um, do you, Hey, by the way, do you guys like our, our very fancy titles? Right. We put a lot of time and money into yes. that. Yes. I, I do think it's this funny a, that such a, for, for such the, a big budget show. Yeah. <laughs> it's like for the podcast, we have like all this professional intro music and videos and transitions and stuff. And then for dinking around, it's like <laughs> handwritten <laughs> on a piece of paper sign. So, yep. Like talk about unscripted, slapped together. Um, this is like this is the uh, this is the definition of an unscripted, slapped together podcast right here, as I'm sure we're proving right here with how things are going. Yep. Um, oh, Nicole Miller said she's making cupcakes right now. That sounds delicious. Uh, how do we get some of those oh, cupcakes, nice. Nicole? Oh, wait a second. I see a follow-up from Christy. Mm. Where? I don't see it. Do you it. see that? No. Or is that there? Maybe that was the first one. Okay, that was, that was the first one I'm seeing again. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. You blew it. Oh, well. Well, I'm hoping What's the she'll... guest situation looking like? Anything? Uh, anything happening? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. No guess. Man, this is riveting. This is riveting podcast entertainment here. Mm -hmm. Can't believe it. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, totally un not pickleball related, just to kill time here while Eddie, oops, I, I mean, while somebody, while our mystery guest, guest tries to uh, connect. <laughs> um, I just realized, like, this year is our 20th high school Oh yeah. Reunion year. Like oh. we 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 graduated from high school 20 years ago. How old does that make you feel? I I mean honestly I feel like I still feel like the exact same person that I was at maybe I don't know age 22 23 so a few years after I graduated but definitely doesn't seem like that happened 20 years ago. That's crazy. Like I, I, I vividly remember like everything that happened in high school. I feel like, or at least a lot of things. I mean, that's just it's crazy that uh, 
that it's been that long. I mean, what? Yep. How is I, that possible? You know, I remember things in high school a lot more than I do in college. Haha, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I am picking saying. up what you are putting down. Yeah. No, it's true, man. 20 years. Um, that's that's crazy. I mean, think about think about the world in 1999 when we graduated until now. You know, internet was just coming around. Live streaming was not a thing at all at that point, as you know, even close to what it is today. Um, you know, iPods had I don't even know if the iPod was out then. I think that was still a couple years later. CDs and cassette tapes. Yeah, I do not, I do not think to. iPads. Yeah, iPods were not out quite yet. I don't think Napster wasn't even out quite yet. No, well, I think Napster came out right after that because I remember freshman year of college. Yeah. Uh, I remember. <laughs> Here's a funny story. Do you remember that Red Hot Chili Pepper song that we were trying to find on Napster? And you spent, I don't know, probably half a day looking for it? <laughs> Yes. You remember that? I remember this. I do, do you, remember this. Yes. Do you remember what the actual name of the song was that you were looking for? Oh, man. I, I knew it for a while, but I forgot it because it's been so long now. I still remember. And it was Around the World. Around the World, Around the World. But yeah, I know there was, there was a, I think there was a song on Napster by Red Hot Chili Peppers, or at least somebody said it was by Red Hot Chili Peppers called I Like Dirt. Do you oh, remember yeah. me thinking that? I was I was totally convinced it was that one. And uh, yeah, I, I thought know. it was, I know, I know, I like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that happened. <laughs> well, it's 9.01, and the Steve Parento show, if it hasn't already started, is about to. And I really think everybody should go over there and check it out. Yeah, so, I agree. What do you think? Do you think it's it's time to call it? I think it's time to call it. Um, let me just... Our special guest is typing something at the moment. Let me just see what it is. Let me see if it has potential. But uh, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen today. It it almost happened. So somebody wanted to come on. So that's, I feel like that counts. Yep. What do you think? Step in the right direction. <laughs> uh, last episode was awesome. We had Gizmo Hall join us, talked about farming and pickleball, and it was just super fun. Today was much more laid back. You got to see the competitive, argumentative side between Webby and me. Uh, we're, we've known each other for so long. We're like brothers sometimes, so we can argue and bicker about that, which is really cool. Uh, and you guys got to see that, especially over something as silly as how to play skinny singles, but it's important. Um, we got to talk about beer a little bit. We got to talk about tournaments coming up. It's just been a great show. It's just been a real casual, great show, and we appreciate you guys tuning in. Yeah, it was super fun. And yeah, this, this show, Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby, is for all of you out there that actually care to find out what is going on uh, with us personally. The, uh, the main podcast, we're going to mainly devote to our special guest to keep it a little shorter in length. This one, you just, you never know what's going to happen. You you never, never know. You never know. Um, so what do you say, Webby? Are we ready to roll out? Yeah, I think it's about that time. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. I certainly know that I did. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. So yeah. <laughs>